Hello, Grace Hope Church family. I hope everybody is doing well. Today we are going to be going over joy, uh, the sermon topic for February. Um, so today's topic is restoring the joy of our salvation. So I like to watch movies. I like to watch a lot of different kinds of movies. Um, I watch uh, Marvel movies, comic book movies, that kind of stuff, Lord of the Rings. I'm kind of a geek. Uh, but I like one of the things I watch, I watch sports movies. And one thing that I've realized in just about like every sports movie that that you ever watched about like a um, like a star that that moves up through the ranks and and becomes a big like say a baseball player baseball star is um, one thing that they'll do is they'll they'll end up getting to this level and all of a sudden they're what my grandma would say like they get too big for their britches it's, it's kind of what she says like the, they'll be famous and they'll have all this money and and um, everything around them, they'll be signing autographs and all that, and they just kind of lose sight that what they do is they love the game. Like, it doesn't become about that anymore. It becomes about their fame and everything around the game, but not about the game itself. And always in those movies, it ends up coming back to a point to where they, they get in trouble or something like that, and they go back and, and think of Mighty Ducks. They'll go back and they'll have to to coach an, a little league team or something like that. And, and as they're coaching it, they realize that in its pure form, what they wanted in the first place, what they loved about it, or what, they, what brought them into the game was just their sheer love of the game. It was just about the love of the game. They love to, to play, they love to be around it. And, uh, and I think that, that just like kind of speaks to us in a way because as, as Christians, a lot of times, we get so caught up with doctrine and all these different kinds of things and, and the way the world and, and how it just is so loud around us that we just forget that it's not about all these different things. It's just about loving Jesus. And, and a lot of the things and doctrine and things like that are good and we should know them. But, but what we're here for, the reason that we're, we're saved is just to love Jesus in its purest form, is just to love Jesus. So, so what I want to do is just kind of go back to that and, and see how we can, we can restore that joy of just being about loving Jesus and walking in love for Jesus. Um, so point one, it was once so simple. It was. Like when we first found Jesus, when we first started walking with him, it wasn't about all of these different things that, that it kind of is made out to be now, that the Christian walk is made out to be now. It's, uh, it was about just loving him. Like, do you remember when, when you found Jesus? Some, some people, it was, it was later in life. Um, they had been saved at an older age. Some people were saved as a child. And, and I think that's a beautiful testimony when God moves in somebody's life and saves them and uh, they walk with him their whole life. I think it's as equally as beautiful as somebody is, is older and made some mistakes through their life and Jesus rescues them out of that. I think they're both beautiful, beautiful things. But when you first knew Jesus and when you first encountered his love, it wasn't about all these different things that, that make it confusing. It was just about loving Jesus. It was just about knowing him and getting to know him. And it was awesome. It was good. It was good. It was about spending time in his presence and getting into the Bible and learning these different things because you wanted to know God. You wanted to know more about Jesus because you loved him. Um, this is what we were made for. This is exactly what we were made for. This is why it was so good. So Colossians 1, 15 through 16 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in heavens and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones, dominions, or rulers, or authority. All things have be, been created through him and for him. So this is a profound, huge theological statement. What it's saying is Jesus created everything. Every star, every planet, every galaxy in the entire universe was created for Jesus, by Jesus, to glorify his name. That means you have been created for Jesus, by Jesus, to know him, to love him, to glorify his name. This is why it's such a pure thing to just walk with God. That's why it feels so right to know Jesus, to, to just get back to the simple form of he loves us and we love him. You were created by him for him. At some point, this gets confusing. At some point, the enemy gets into our life 
when, when we kind of step away from the simplicity of, of just loving Jesus, the enemy gets into our life and he chips away at the simplicity of this. And the Bible addresses the situation because he knows this happens. Um, it says 2 Corinthians 11.3, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. This walk that we're on was never supposed to be confusing in anything but simple and pure. Just walking with Jesus and devotion to him and loving him and all about his love for us and our love for him and just walking hand in hand with that. And that, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. But the Bible says that our minds can be led astray from the simplicity of loving God, of just loving Jesus and, and living a life devotion to him. Um, somehow it just becomes about doctrine and even, even, especially in North American culture, even about politics. And it was ne- it's never supposed to be about that. Um, so I'll give you an example of, about this. Uh, I have permission to talk about this before you guys hear me start talking about it and are like, what is this dude doing? He's about to get divorced. No, honestly, <laughs> honestly. So my marriage, Jenny and I's marriage, is not perfect. It's, it's far from perfect. We, we have struggles. There, there's communication issues. Um, you know, it's just, just like every marriage. Marriage is, marriage is work. It is. It's, it's work. It's tough sometimes. And, you know, so many times we don't understand where each other is coming from. That's why, like, marriage is work. We have to talk about, like, this is where I'm coming from. This is where she's coming from. And we kind of have to walk in it and understand it because sometimes – our minds will just be boggled by things. Um, for instance, Jenny, Jenny can watch Grey's Anatomy. And, and I, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll be like, I don't understand how you can watch this show. That's about the same thing over and over and over again. And over again. Like that show is constantly about drama and a, I'm going to get on a rabbit trail. Or CSI. It's the same thing. It's the same, like, they're solving the same crimes every time, and they do it in this dramatic tone that's so cheesy to me, and I'm like, I don't get how you like this drama show. I don't get it. I don't get it. She's different when it comes to that. She's made different, you know? And at the same time, I'm not off the hook on this because she'll look at things that I do, and she's like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. The other day, we're, we're in, this, in this house, right, and I'm trying to rewire uh, it was a um, triple switch is what it was called, a three-way switch. And I'm trying to rewire it, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't figure it out. So I ended up plugging it up and, and not having electric go to it. And I was sitting on the couch later on, and I was just, I wasn't talking. I was just thinking. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, that switch is bothering me. I can't figure it out. And she's like, why would that even bother you this much? We'll get it figured out. But she didn't understand that I'm just built like this, like, I, I'm a guy, I want to take care of that, you know, and, it, and I wasn't able to take care of it. And, uh, and she doesn't understand why I want an Infinity Gauntlet, like, a, like from the Marvel movies. Like, I want an Infinity Gauntlet. She doesn't understand why I want one of those. She calls me a dork all the time. But it's, <laughs> it's, we're just different. Like, a lot of times we're different. Men and women are different. And, and you know what's kind of crazy about that is, like, I don't know, a few years ago, that, like, this is a known fact. There, there's a, a, a book, um, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, or vice versa. But it talks about the differences in men and women. And what, what I've come to understand is that wives and husbands, men and women, can't even understand the way each other works. Like, we, we can't. We don't, we don't get it. And it's okay to not get it. I, can, I love my wife with an undying love, like I am, she's my person, I love her, and, uh, and I would want to spend my life with no one else on, on this earth. I don't have to understand everything about her to, to love her, and she, thank goodness, because I am a weird cat sometimes, man, doesn't have to understand everything about me to love me. And uh, so if we can't even understand about, about our spouses or about about marriage or about the opposite sex, what makes us think that we'll be able to understand everything about God? And what makes us think that we have to understand all of everything about God 
to love him. We don't. We don't. We, God has given us a revelation of himself, but he also says, you're never going to be able to get this about me. Like, here it is, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. It will ne- we'll never be able to grasp the, the bigness that is God, the God of the universe. I mean, he is right now governing solar systems far out there in the universe and telling stars what temperature to burn at. He's holding it all together. And at the same time, he's here with me as I'm speaking this sermon, and he's in China with a persecuted church right next to them. And at the same time, he's holding all of his children together and lifting them up, and he's saving and and pulling people out of the clutches of darkness. We can't get all that God is, and we don't have to to love him, to devote our lives to him. We need to get back to where it's just simple again. Back to the fundamentals is where we need to be. But we need to go from, from being up here to where our, everything is surrounding us and, and, and making it confusing and just get back to loving Jesus, man, and letting everything flow out of that. We need to get back to the good old-fashioned loving Jesus. And you know what? What happens is when we do this, like a lot of times they'll... We'll, we'll talk about, um, well, yes, it's not as simple as loving God. We need to, and, and about his love, we need to obey too. Well, absolutely we do, but that flows from a heart that loves God. If you love God, you are going to obey God. Matthew twenty-two thirty-four to 40 says, But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and they were trying to catch Jesus, and, uh, And man, if you have just a little bit of a rebellious spirit in you at all, like I do, you love Jesus like attacking the Pharisees. He does it on a constant basis. And he calls calls them whitewashed tombs. And I'm just like, "Mm." like tell him, you know, (laughs) know? and and I just love that about him. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love your God, the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. It's easy to look past those lines real quick. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So what it's saying is that the entire Old Testament can be summed up by loving Jesus, loving God with all of your heart, with all your mind. All these laws, like right now as a church, we're going through and we're reading Leviticus, which is can be very, very boring at times. Straight up, it can be. It's about all these different laws that that they have to do. Jesus says, you'll fulfill all of these if you just love me. Love me with everything you have, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. If you just love your neighbor as you love yourself, all of these will fall into place and you will do them. This is what Jesus says. This is why loving him is such a big deal. This is why we always had to go back to loving God, to just to... We will live, we will naturally live out a life of obedience if we love Jesus with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. It's not about white knuckle obedience. Like if we're sitting here trying so hard to not sin and and trying to obey with, with everything we have in us, but we're not loving, we've missed the point. We've missed the point. We we will obey because we love. Obedience the way Jesus wants us to obey is a heart that loves him. Jesus knew this. And he says it right here, John 14, 15. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Which means, if you love Jesus, you're naturally going to keep my commandments. He's He's not giving you a command on that. He's saying, if you love me, if this is what you do, you're going to keep my commandments. If your heart loves me, you're going to want to obey. Think about this. Like, I've I've used this illustration before. So with Jenny, um, Again, I am not a, a perfect husband by any means. If she's watching this, she probably just said amen just, <laughs> just now. But, but so I love her. So I, I naturally want to do things for her. Like, so I, I work second shift and Jenny works first. So she'll get up in the morning 
and, uh, and she, she get, pours her cup of coffee to go to work. When I get home at night, I set the coffee for her so that she doesn't have to get up and set the pot of coffee. Now, like, that's not a command, and it's not, not anything that, there's nothing written on her marriage contract that says, I need to do this for Jenny. But because I love her, I want to do things that please her. And it's the same thing with, with Jesus. Like, if we love Jesus, and if we, and if we, we seek him, and always look for, for ways to love him, which we, we will just by knowing him, then obedience is going to flow from that. And, uh, you know, if we struggle against sin, if we, if we struggle this uh, against sin without loving Jesus, then we've missed the point entirely. And we're not living the life that, that he wants, uh, wants us to live. Like, and right now, like, like I just talked about, we're going through Levit- Leviticus. And... You know, he's, God's got all of these commands for them to, to do. Like, you need to do this. All these are sin offerings. It's because it's, it's not, there's not, not that there's not a point for it. It's because God is holy, and a sin against him needs to be accounted for. But he also wants them to see there is a seriousness to, to sin. There is an absolute seriousness to it. But they, what they keep doing, it when, as we read through the Old Testament, we'll see this. They'll keep offering these sacrifices and then they'll sin and they'll keep going back and offering sacrifices and and God at at one point he keeps on he reiterates this throughout the entire thing he's like I don't want your sacrifices you're not getting it you're missing the point what I want is your heart what I want is you and if we if we continue to just like to white knuckle give obedience and and not out of a heart that loves God, then we are doing the same thing that they're doing there. And what we end up, what we end up having is a pharisaical attitude of, I'm doing this and you're not. And that's not the way it was meant to be. We need to be like falling on our face in front of God like, I have sinned, you know, not I am better than anybody. Um, and we, we just need to go back to that, rejoicing in the God who saved us, who, who redeemed us. Um, Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2 says, But now, thus says the Lord your Creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. We need to get back to loving this God. The God who redeemed us, who formed us, who called us by name, who saved us, who calls us his. The God who is always there. This verse says, when, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the waters. It, it, and this is guaranteed through the Bible. We're going to go, go through deep waters. We're going to go through fires. But it says, when you pass through these, I will be with you. The rivers will not overflow you, and you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. He's always going to be with us. Always. When we go through these deep waters, this God who saved us is going to be with us. The one who redeemed us, who called us by name. God says in Isaiah 43, 4, Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored, and I love you. He loves us. I, I want you to be brutally honest with yourself. Because, and, and I could say this because this is me. So when I'm reading in the Bible, I have to fight against. So it's really easy for me to see what the Bible says about sin in my own heart. I see that and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, that, that's, that's me. I get it, how I'm that bad, how, how I need Jesus to come in and save me. I get that. I get how the the parts that I guess you could say, quote unquote, are the bad parts about us and, and what God thinks about sin. I get that. The part that is tough for me to, to believe is this, that it says that, it says that I am precious in God's sight and, sin, and I'm honored and he loves me. You got to be honest with yourself on this though. Do you honestly believe everything the Bible says? Do you believe this is God's word? Is it, is it his if you believe what it says about sin and everything like that, you need to believe this too. You need to believe that you are precious in his sight and honored and that he loves you because it changes everything. 
It changes everything. When you believe this, when you walk in this, you automatically live this life that, that loves him because he loves you. And you walk around knowing that you are precious and honored and, and loved in God's sight. And what a, what a joy that is. It brings back this joy of this salvation of, of knowing God and, and loving him and knowing that he redeemed us and called us. Well, we have to believe this. We have to really believe this. And, and if you don't, if you struggle with this, I, I ask you, be honest with God. I, I have to be. I, I read it and I'm like, God, I'm having a hard time believing what you say about yourself and me and your word. Help me. Help me. Jesus had an had a, uh, encounter with somebody later on in the Bible where, where the guy says, I believe, help my unbelief. It's, it's, it's okay to come to God with, God, I'm having trouble believing this. Help me believe it. That's a humble and contrite spirit that God loves. No matter what, we can have joy in all of our circumstances. Um, Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18 says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the field of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, Yet I will exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. So what he's saying is, no matter what happens, no matter if all the food is taken away from me, no matter what circumstances I am, I am in, I'm going to exalt God. I'm going to rejoice in my salvation. Because he knows that he is known by God and that, that he knows God, that he walks with him. What the world can crumble around us. The world can literally fall apart and Jesus is going to stand firm next to you with his hand on your shoulder the entire time. He would never leave you. That is always a reason to rejoice in God. He has saved you. He's redeemed you. He's called you by name. You are his. You are his. We are changed because we know God and an encounter with God's love changes us forever. There's a, a a show that I, that I love. Um, it's called The Chosen. Uh, it's, it's a story. It's a YouTube show. I highly recommend it. Uh, look it up. It's free on there. Um, and, and it just it portrays Jesus in, in a way that the scriptures do, but no other show ever has. And it's, it's just an awesome, awesome show. And uh, there's a quote on there from Mary Magdalene. And Mary had an encounter with Jesus, and she was forever changed. And, uh, and, and what she said was, she was talking to a Pharisee who had asked. He was like, what is going on? Because I saw you, and you couldn't even talk. And now, now look at you. You're, you're like happy and smiling and, and getting ready to, to go do this, this feast. What, what is going on with you? And uh, she had this conversation with him, and she says, I was one way, and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. That has happened in all of our lives. At, at one point, Jesus called us by name, redeemed us, and called us his. And went on to say that I'm always going to be with you, never to leave you. To say that you are precious and honored. And he loves you. And we are changed. Now we live a life of, of love to God, like devoted to God because of that. So we, we have all of the reasons in the world to, to have joy, to be filled with joy. So, so today I just want to remind you, just go back to, the, to the, the way it once was when it was just about knowing Jesus and loving him and the purity and simplicity of, of devotion to Jesus. Rejoice that you've been redeemed. Rejoice that he's always with you. Rejoice that he loves you. Rejoice that your, your life has been changed because of him. Um, I want to pray over, over you today, and then uh, we'll, we'll be done for the day. Father, I, I uh, thank you for redeeming us. I thank you for, for loving us. I thank you that, that we are yours, that you, you, you say that 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 you will always be with us, that you will never leave us, Jesus. Um, remind us, Lord, just the simplicity of, of loving you, of, of knowing you, walking with you. There's such joy in that, and that everything...
flows from just loving you and, and being with you. And if we just pour our hearts out to you and love you, then the life you want us to leave or to, to lead is always going to be right in front of us. Um, we thank you, Jesus, and we praise you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.